As an archaeologist, you're bound to occasionally come across a few things that leave you scratching your head. Usually, when you can't figure something out, you can turn to scientists for help. But sometimes, even they're stumped. And that's how we end up with the mysteries that remain unsolved to this day. Check out some of these mind-boggling archaeological mysteries in this video. Scientists have used modern scanning technology to locate a long, mysterious tunnel inside the Khufu Pyramid in Egypt. This is a new discovery at the time this video was made, announced in March 2023. The Pyramid of Khufu, one of three pyramids that make up the Great Pyramids of Giza, was named after its builder, a 4th dynasty pharaoh who reigned from 2509 to 2483 BCE. The discovery was made using modern scanning technology as part of the Scan the Pyramids project, a multinational archaeological mission using infrared thermography and muons tomography to produce three-dimensional images of the interior spaces of the Great Pyramids of Giza. The corridor measures nearly 30 feet in length and over 6 feet wide, and was discovered on the northern side of the pyramid. The presence of the corridor and perhaps an attached chamber had been assumed for a while, and scientists have used endoscopy to confirm the assumption. The chamber is larger than researchers had assumed in the past, though, and determining the purpose of the chamber and finding what's located behind the back wall of the room will require additional research. Not many people know that there are also pyramids in Greece. In fact, Greece is the only country in Europe with recognized instances of ancient pyramidal architecture. There are several pyramid-like structures in southern Greece, the most impressive of which is the one near the village of Hellenikon in the eastern Peloponnese. The pyramid is made entirely of grey limestone quarried from the region and features large blocks arranged in trapezoidal and partially polygonal system. Its upper platform, which may have been used as a lookout point, is supported by vertical walls that rise to a height of 12 feet. Archaeologists are uncertain about the pyramid's use. It may have served as a memorial or an observation communication tower, but other theories suggest it was a small garrison fortification or an astronomical observatory. Pausanias, a 2nd century Greek traveler and geographer, mentions two buildings resembling pyramids in his writings. He describes a building on the road from Argos to Epidoria made like a pyramid, with Argive shields in relief on its sides. Pausanias suggests that the building was a tomb for fallen soldiers. It's likely that he was referring to the Hellenikon Pyramid, which means it already existed by then. It could be several centuries older. The caves of Karaftu are a series of chambers carved into the cliff face of a mountain in the Kurdistan province of Iran. These caves were formed naturally, but were modified by human inhabitants over many centuries. They became important from an economic perspective in ancient times, as they were situated on the Silk Road. In the past, the caves were only reachable using ladders or ropes, but now there is a long staircase leading up to the entrance. Local historians say the caves were often used by locals in times of danger as a refuge. Nobody knows exactly when the modification of the caves began, but it's thought that it started during the Parthian period between the 3rd century BCE and the 3rd century CE. The Greek inscription in the caves is consistent with this dating. It reads, Heracles resides here. Nothing evil may enter. The inscription is from the early Hellenistic period and indicates that whoever Heracles was, he thought the cave belonged to him and him only. Nowadays, the caves of Karaftu are a tourist attraction and have been on the UNESCO World Heritage shortlist since 2015. Located in a remote area of peatland on the island of Hoy in Orkney, Scotland, the Dwarfy Stain is a megalithic chambered tomb. This Neolithic rock-cut tomb is unique in Orkney and may be the only one in all of Britain. Although the tomb's plan is similar to other chambered tombs in Orkney, the Dwarfy Stain is the only one made from a single block of Devonian Old Red Sandstone, rather than from individual stones. The tomb measures 24 feet in length, 12 feet in width, and up to 7 feet in height. Sadly, it's been vandalized over time, although less so now it's managed by Historic Environment Scotland. 
A hole smashed into the roof was noted as early as the 16th century, and the surfaces have been covered with 18th and 19th century graffiti. A stone slab once covered the tomb's entrance on the west side, but now lies on the ground in front of the tomb. The slab door is a unique feature in Northern Europe, and is similar to Neolithic or Bronze Age tombs around the Mediterranean. The dwarfy stain was named for a local legend that claims a dwarf named Trollid lived inside it, although confusingly the tomb has also been associated with folklore about giants. In Germany, an ancient column featuring images of Roman gods, including Jupiter, was discovered by archaeologists in 2020. The column was found in the town of Kirpen, near Cologne, in a well at a lignite mine site. The column was damaged, with experts suggesting that it may have been thrown into the well deliberately sometime between the 2nd and 5th centuries, possibly by Christians seeking to destroy remnants of the pagan gods. The artifact stands more than 16 feet tall, and also bears images of the goddesses Juno, Minerva, and Nemesis Diana. The depiction of Nemesis Diana is rare, and it's unclear why she would be portrayed alongside the three main Roman deities. The well in which the column was found is believed to have been used between the 2nd and 5th centuries, hence the approximate dating for the column, and its use for such a long time is regarded as extraordinary. The column may have stood in the periphery of a series of such wells that belonged to Roman farms or manors, and the discovery could offer insights into religious conditions in the Rhineland during the late Roman period. The Marisha Bet Guvrin National Park in Israel's Judean Cephala is an area already well known to archaeologists. It became even more well known in August 2022 when a set of game pieces made from goat and sheep bones was found at the site. Experts have been able to identify the game pieces as belonging to an ancient game known as Astragaloi or Astragalomancy, which was played by both the Greeks and the Romans during times of antiquity. Some historians think the Romans might have picked it up from the Etruscans, but there isn't enough reliable evidence to support that idea. Nobody knows exactly how long ago the game was invented. But these pieces, known as oracle bones, were carved 2,300 years ago. Some of them bear inscriptions and likenesses of Greek deities like Aphrodite, Hermes, and Eros. The inscriptions offer a few clues about how phases of the game might have worked, as most of them are short words like stop, robber, and you are burnt. It's generally believed that Astragaloi was a fortune-telling game, but the precise rules of the game are a secret that's been lost to time. Located in Heiko, Nevada, the Mount Irish Extraterrestrial Petroglyph site is believed by many to feature images of interstellar life forms. Situated near the famous Extraterrestrial Highway, the site includes petroglyphs of the Paranagat Man and a UFO, with no similar depictions of humanoid figures found elsewhere in the area. The UFO image resembles a classic flying saucer with a round base and a dome on top. The meaning behind these petroglyphs remains a mystery, with some speculating that they depict extraterrestrial beings, while others suggest that they may simply be a result of people looking at them and seeing what they want to see. The location of the petroglyph site isn't far from Area 51, which could be significant. It's possible that interpretations of the glyphs are influenced by the connection between Area 51 and alien life, but it's equally possible that the glyphs are hoaxes perpetrated by people who wanted to create such a connection. The area surrounding Area 51 offers plenty of allegedly extraterrestrial related places to visit, including the Black Mailbox, the ALE Inn, and the Alien Research Center. When you have a set of mysterious stone spheres in your local area, it makes sense to make a feature out of them. The residents of Point Arena in California knew exactly what the stones on Schooner Gulch State Beach reminded them of, and so they nicknamed it Bowling Ball Beach. The bowling ball-shaped rocks here vary between 2 feet and 3 feet in diameter, and almost all of them are perfectly spherical. Many of them have patches of moss or grass for decoration, too. It's thought that they were once encased in mudstone from the surrounding cliffs, 
but millions of years of erosion have washed away the mudstone and left behind only the spherical cores. As for why they're all so perfectly round, scientists say it's all down to a process called concretion, in which mineral cements bind grains of stone or sand into larger formations over the course of millions of years. Not everyone's satisfied by the explanation, though. You'll find plenty of people around Point Arena who believe their bowling balls are artificial, or perhaps even alien. Speaking of strange rock formations in the United States of America, here's Rock City in Minneapolis, Kansas. People travel here from miles around to check out the landscape of strange, alien-looking spherical boulders that stand in this state park. Back when these spheres were formed, large parts of Kansas were covered by an inland sea. The presence of the sea aided in a process that resulted in what scientists refer to as cannonball concretions. That's right, Rock City was apparently created by the same all-natural process as Bowling Ball Beach. That's only the latest theory, though. In the past, the rocks have been misidentified as glacial boulders, or even corals. There are some 200 distinct rock formations at Rock City, some of which measure 13 feet across the center. You'll find signage at the site claiming this is the biggest collection of spherical concretions in one place anywhere in the world, but the veracity of that statement is debatable. So long as the science behind places like this seems so implausible, doubt will remain about their true nature. The so-called Sitivo inscription in Sitivo, Bulgaria, actually an ancient inscription? Or is it just a natural rock formation? This is something that archaeologists and experts have been arguing about since it was found inside a cave in 1928. That's almost 100 years ago, and they haven't come close to a definitive answer in all that time. Those who believe that the markings are an inscription claim to be able to prove that they were made around 3,200 years ago. They point to the fact that the marks are arranged in two neat lines, and that each of the alleged characters is around 16 inches tall. The rectangular area of the wall that the characters appear on looks like it's been polished at some point in the distant past, and the symbols aren't totally dissimilar to ancient Germanic runes. Archaeologist Alexander Peeve, who found the inscriptions on that 1928 expedition, went to his grave believing the marks were created by human hands. The naysayers reject the evidence presented by the believers as flawed, and say these marks are nothing more than natural cracks in the rocky walls of the cave. Who do you believe? Ancient temples aren't difficult to find in Vietnam, but the vast and elaborate ruin of the Mai Sun Temple in Doi Phu isn't like all the others. The majority of Vietnam's old temples are Buddhist, dating back to Vietnam adopting Buddhism during the 2nd century. Two centuries after that, an ethnic group called the Cham people started building temples of their own, but their temples were dedicated to the Hindu god Shiva, not Buddha. To them, Shiva was the creator and destroyer of all life, and also the protector of their people. My son is the most impressive and enduring of the temples they made. Translated into English, its name means beautiful mountain, and has more to do with the region it's in than the temple itself. The original 4th century temple was made of wood, but was burned to the ground for unknown reasons around 100 years later. The temple we see today was built by order of King Sambuvarman during the 7th century, and in the process, a mystery was created. The handmade fired bricks that make up the temple were fitted together without mortar or any other binding agent. How is that possible for the people of the time? Your guess is as good as ours. Because we often underestimate the building capabilities of our ancestors, it comes as a surprise to most people to find out that human beings have been building artificial islands all over the planet for centuries. In Scotland, those islands are called Cranogs, and thanks to a fairly recent discovery, we now know that the Scottish Cranogs are even older than we thought they were. It was once believed that the oldest Scottish Cranog came from the Iron Age, somewhere around the 9th century. In 2018, though, radiocarbon dating was carried out on four of the Cranogs in Scotland's Outer Hebrides, 
and those tests yielded an astonishing result. The Cranogs aren't 1,200 years old. They're more like 5,500 years old. Making a Cranog isn't easy. The process involves piling layer after layer of rock onto the seabed until the island sits above the waves, and then coating the whole construction in soil so you can grow grass and plants on it. That building material would have to be shipped to the site of the Cranog by boat. In other words, the people who lived in North Scotland 5,500 years ago were master engineers and boat builders. History has underestimated them. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.